so Martin, this time of year now we're thinking about getting ready for springtime and calving. So what can we do to help prevent scour issues on the farm in spring? Okay, so we really want to stop our calves getting scoured, particularly our young calves. It's the workload. Whatever about the cost, it's the workload we have to think about. So a couple of things we can start thinking about now, really making sure our calving areas and our calf rearing areas are clean. Getting them disinfected properly, getting them clean properly, number one. Number two, let's boost our cows' uh, immunity so they can pass on immunity through the bee stings to the calves. So we want to use these broad spectrum um, uh, scour vaccines that cover the main pathogens. They need to be gotten into those cows three to 12 weeks before calving. So around Christmas, early January, we need to start thinking about put, uh, putting uh, these vaccines. The third thing I'd ask you to do is uh, really look at what's your plan for your nursery. So calf, I'm just born to three, four days of age. What's the plan to get them set up correctly? The individual calf then, you come out, there's a calf scouring in the pen. What approach do we take to that calf? Okay, so we must, we must treat this calf. These calves are, are young. They're getting dehydrated very fast and the problem is when we get things like rotavirus and so on these calves are also getting acidotic they almost look a little bit drunk and they lose their suck okay so they might be fully dehydrated so the first thing we do we have to get in the right electrolyte so have a chat with with your vet about a strong iron difference electrolyte these are a little bit more expensive but they have a little more goodies in them to correct that acidosis and correct the dehydration in the calf and generally day one we want four feeds electrolytes some milk electrolytes some milk we keep milk in there to keep the nutrition going your electrolytes will not satisfy the nutritional requirement for the calf even though it's, it goes against our grain to, uh, to feed the milk we need to feed a certain amount of milk we don't mix the electrolyte with the milk because we want to keep the volumes up and also those strong iron difference electrolytes are really not compatible with mixing with milk given the electrolytes then stomach tube calf feeder any preference Okay, now generally in that first bout of scour, a lot of those calves have lost their suck. So what we're really trying to do, we're going to get in there and tube that electrolyte. It'll get into whatever stomach, it'll get absorbed. If we're looking at the milk feed, if they can suck even 200, 300 ml of milk, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to avoid tubing the milk. If I do, I'm going to dump it into a, a, a developing room in or the wrong part of the stomach. It's going to sour them and it's not going to be of benefit. So I definitely tube my electrolyte. Yeah drink my milk if I can, chew my electrolyte again uh, if, 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 uh, if they're not sucking and hopefully we're getting to the point that the suck is starting to return. Brilliant and there's obviously lots of different therapies out there for scour, we'll just talk about antibiotics maybe for a minute first, um, obviously we're really pushing towards responsible use of antibiotics and, and using less antibiotics where or in what situation would you go in with an antibiotic to a scouring calf? Yeah, we have to be real sensible here. Antibiotics are generally not the answer when we've got these viral scours and parasitic causing scours. Have a chat with your vet again about using a general broad spectrum. It doesn't have to be something that's up, up the food chain and antibiotics at the beginning. Get in for those uh, couple of days. I really, really, really try and avoid oral antibiotics. We're so used to putting tablets down calves, but that alters the gut we can end up with resistant E. coli coming out the back end. So injectable antibiotics under the guidance of your vet, broad spectrum initially. And another aspect then of scour and generally sick calves that we mightn't think of is it's uncomfortable, they're running a temperature, you'll see them, they're hunched up. Is there any sort of pain relief or anti-inflammatories we should be going in with as well to try and, and help them recover? Yeah, it's, it's a real good point, Helena. And I think, I, and I grew up with a sort of generation of veterinary where anti-inflammatory and pain relief was not our thing because we didn't have those products. But now they're there, they're readily available and a farmer can use them uh, under their vet guidance against very, very su su successfully. First line of treatment is let's make that calf a bit more comfortable. So get some anti-inflammatory in there for a day, maybe repeat it two days later. A lot of those calves improve in form and that improves their drinking. Yeah, exactly. And one thing then we'd often talk about with scour, you'll hear it in, in different advice pieces about scour is getting the sick calf out of the pen, isolating them away from the others. What's your thoughts on that? Is it practical or? Yeah, and, we, and again, we got to look at the practicality here and it's fine what the book says, but you've got loads and loads of calves, heaps and heaps of pens. It's middle of February, whatever. And generally, if I've got one sick calf in a pen, there's going to be another one or two behind it very, very fast. So I'm immediately thinking about dealing with the group. The advantage of isolation is one, one thing we can do, we can isolate that. We can isolate the calf, but also what we can do is we can heat that calf up, get it under some sort of warmth. And even in a pen situation, we may create an area where we can hang a red lamp and get those calves behind a gate and so on. So my preference is 
uh, try and warm them up if you can. If it's a, just an individual, yes, isolate. But if you feel there's more going on there, start dealing with the group. We've done our four feeds, we've done our electrolytes, we've maybe gone in with an antibiotic and anti-inflammatory. Calf's not getting better, more calves in the pen are getting scour. What do we need to think about doing now? Okay, we certainly need to warm up those sick calves, make sure we're getting them, getting them into a warm environment to improve it. We're starting to get towards a veterinary intervention. If those individuals are not getting better, getting them sucked back 36 hours, 24, 36 hours, uh, we really need to look at possibly getting those calves drips. Right, to get them rehydrated properly, get the acidosis corrected. Also at this point, start looking at a bit of diagnostics. What's going on? Even if you've vaccinated, even if you've done other preventative therapies, we may be just awash with a certain type of infection that we're not able to deal with. And I suppose as well, if there's a calf down, not able to get up any of that, they need to have the vet out. You're not going to be tackling them once yourself. Absolutely. I mean, if we're getting very, very sleepy, sluggish, low yeah. response calves, that are not responding to your normal level of tubing and so on pretty rapidly, those calves will need veterinary intervention. And like you said there, Martin, very quickly scour. It's going to be a group issue and not an individual issue. Yeah. So we've talked about diagnostics. What else can we do to try and stem that spread of scour within the group? Okay, if that group is starting to take off, uh, the wet bums are starting to appear to you. First of all, they're now become a big infectious focus. Okay, so the problem we have is now we're starting to walk that infection around the shed and the tendency is we'll treat the sick calves first, we'll get the scour on our leggings and the next thing we know we're off we go and it's starting to move around. So we need to try and, if we can, treat those sick ones last, if, if at all possible. That's number one. Number two, uh, take the bed out. Get the beds clean, get the place dry, re-disinfect again. So I, I'm ta probably talking about using powder disinfectant disinfected at that point, a stalasan, a hydrated line. Don't bring a whole load more moisture back into the shed by trying to wash everything out. Get the bed out, get some lime in there, and now start giving electrolytes to the full group. So midday feed I'd start off with, with electrolytes if they're drinking well and continuing to drink milk. Often that can be enough, uh, minimum two up to three litres uh, a calf in the middle of the day. If they're getting bad, they need more fluid, they need another feed at night time. So milk, electrolytes, milk, electrolytes, four feeds a day again. I'm sorry to say, but you have to get the volume in. You have to get the volume in. So there's quite a lot in all of that now. Maybe a good approach really is to have a chat with your vet, even at this stage, about preventing scour, but at the start of spring, come up with an approach. Treatment plans for the individual calf, treatment plans for the, for the group, and, and make sure that they're involved because you don't want to end up and we've been there, we were going out and you're dripping five or six calves. You want to get them early on when you can maybe treat them without them getting to that stage. But every sick calf equals more sick calves. So getting in early and having a plan is, is, is a big part of it. Early intervention with midday electrolytes can solve a lot. Yeah. So one or two sick calves in a group, I'm moving in very quickly and giving them a warm electrolyte drink uh, in yeah. the middle of the day and whip the bed out, drop the infectious pressure. Yes. And a lot of the time that group can move on.